in any track that contains vocals, the vocal sound itself is of course going to attract the ear before anything else. Um, and as a result of that, we really need to think very carefully whenever we're configuring reverbs for tracks which have vocals in them. And in this chapter, what we're going to do is exactly that. Take a vocal which is currently dry within this mix and add not just one, but a couple of different reverbs to it to really sort of try and glue it to the track a little bit more. Now in this track as it stands at the moment, I've got some plugins which are controlling tone and compression, overall volume for this sound, but I haven't got anything that's doing anything to the space around the vocal, so it's as dry as it was when I recorded it, um, and what we're going to do in a little while is just to start configuring reverbs. But let's hear it dry first. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become Opposites. No, love it ain't simple with you anytime. Battle line strong. So I've let the track run on at the end because what you can hear is that some of the sounds in the backing track have got some reverb, they've got a sense of space around them, and as a result, the vocal feels dry and close at the moment. Now, that's not something I immediately want to try and change or get rid of. I don't want to make this vocal washy or to add so much reverb to it that it feels like it just disappears into the background. I do want it to be the sort of front and center of the mix. But at the moment, there is a real sort of uh, disconnect between the space and the other sounds and the vocal itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set up a reverb on an auxiliary track. And the type of reverb that I'm going to reach for is a sort of plate reverb. Now plates are really good for just adding a little bit of space around a vocal and to give it a sense of context. I'm going to just solo this sound so we're working with the vocal by itself. And what I'm going to do is to set up an auxiliary send to the first available auxiliary that isn't assigned, which is auxiliary three. You can see I've got a couple of reverbs in the track already on some elements of the backing track. So auxiliary three is the first one that's completely unassigned. And what I'm going to do here is to drop into my reverb folder and I'm going to come to lustrous plates. This is made by Liquid Sonics, this plugin. And what this allows me to do is to replicate the sound of lots of different types of plate. Plate reverb, electromechanical reverb, um, has been sort of popular for an awfully long time. And what I've got here is a chance to go through and choose a different type of reverb, um, a different type of plate. And I can choose any of these, um, and uh, all of them have slightly different sonic characters. What I can then do is to choose um, the overall reverb time. Uh, for the reverb that I've selected. And I've got some other parameters here which are going to allow me to introduce modulation, both in terms of its depth and rate, the uh, pre-delay time, which is going to allow me to set a um, millisecond delay between the vocal itself and then the reverb that's generated. And I can clock that to tempo if I would rather work with a sort of quantized value instead, which I am going to do. I've got an overall width control, which is going to decide how wide this particular reverb is going to sound. And then the all important mix dial. This is going to set the balance between dry and wet signals. Now, because I've set this reverb up on an auxiliary, I only need this sound to be 100% wet because the dry sound is coming from the channel itself. So let's just run the vocal. I'm going to introduce this um, uh, plate treatment and we'll just begin to see how it sits around the vocal. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No love ain't simple with you anytime Strong. So I've got a control here which allows me to disperse frequencies more broadly or to minimize that spread if I want to. And what I want here is just literally a little bit of color around the vocal just to have it um, sort of imbue this slightly, I don't know, just this, this sense of space around the vocal itself just so it's not absolutely bone dry. But I only need a little bit of this for that to be the case. Let's put it back in context. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong 
Okay, so I took it out for the second line and then put it back in. You can hear that even at this incredibly low volume, what we've got now is just a little bit of a spatial connection between the vocal and the track behind it. And because we've set this up on an auxiliary, the original volume of the channel is completely preserved and we're adding reverb. So in other words, we've got all of the original plus the reverb. Now, because this track is quite slow and because there is space between the vocal lines, I think there's also an opportunity to configure a reverb that's much, much longer than this, which maybe is more of a kind of special effect. Now, this wouldn't work on every sort of track that you were uh, potentially producing. If you're producing dance music at 125 beats per minute, something with a reverb time that's going to be much longer is perhaps going to run the risk of becoming a little bit more cloudy and just providing too much space. But in a track that's much slower, maybe we can get away with something which has just got a slightly more cinematic feel. And to do that, what I'm going to do is to set up another auxiliary. So this is going to be a reverb treatment in addition to the one that I set up a moment ago. Again, I'm going to just turn up the send level to it. And then what I'm going to do is to add that reverb. And the one that I've got in mind is Valhalla's Shimmer reverb. And what this does is to produce this sort of very bright, um, almost sort of hyper-inflated uh, top-end reverb. <clears throat> it's an amazingly big sounding uh, treatment. Now again, because we're on an auxiliary, what I can do is to turn the mix up to 100%. And crucially, what Shimmer allows me to do is to add a pitch shifting component to the reverb treatment. So imagine creating a reverb, which then internally can be shifted above its original pitch. So what we get is all these kind of super bright overtones. Now we've got some other parameters here that we've seen already. I've got a chance to cut out low frequency content. I've got a chance to control size and diffusion and the feedback, in other words, how much this new pitch shifting element feeds back into Shimmer to create even more overtones. And here I've got a chance to choose what uh, that um, pitch shift is going to be in terms of its semitone. So I'm going up an octave. Now, crucially, what I can do is to choose a reverb mode here as well. Now, mono is obviously going to keep things compact and small and kind of around the vocal. I'm going to go for something much, much bigger. I'm going to go for the big stereo option here, um, which is going to give me a, a much wider treatment. Now, I've turned the send level up a lot, so we're going to hear this very clearly, and it's going to be far too much for this track, I suspect, with this current level of setting. Love ain't simple when you anymore We have become opposites No love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Yeah, okay, so let's hear that with the backing track. I think it'll be too much. Love ain't simple with you anymore we have become opposites No love it ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, so a couple of things that I want to do here. Obviously, I want to turn it down because it's too much, but also hearing things too loudly like this allows you to really sort of focus on them. Not only is it too loud, I think it's too bright. So what I'm going to do is to cut out some high frequency content. So we're getting rid of some of the brightest overtones and just controlling those a little bit more. I'm also interested to hear what happens with a little bit more mod depth and a slightly higher mod rate. But mostly what I want to do is to turn it down. Now, a couple of ways I can do this. I can obviously... Um, turn down the send level. That means that less volume is going to be sent to this auxiliary so that it's quieter. But the other thing, of course, I can do when I'm mixing vocal reverbs is simply to turn down the volume of the return channel. What that basically means is that obviously the channel where the reverb is being produced is going to be quieter. If I grab its fader and drag it down, it's going to get quieter. And one of the advantages of auxiliary reverbs is that effectively, whilst the dry sound is controlled by the input channel or the vocal channel in this context, obviously the auxiliary channel has its own fader. So it's very easy for me to set a volume balance between those two things. So it's now a little bit less bright, a little bit more modulated and considerably quieter. Let's hear that now. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you anytime. Battle 
Okay, that's probably still a bit loud, but it's much more in context with the rest of the track. So what we've done is to look at two separate reverb treatments, one of which is a pretty good sort of benchmark starting point for almost any track that features vocals. A plate reverb just around a vocal, just to give it a little bit of a sense of space and to give your singer just a little bit of sort of um, help really in terms of adding some space to a reverb is a great place to start. And you won't need very much of that to feel the effect that um, plates can provide. And then in the context of a track like this, which is quite ambient and quite slow and quite laid back, we can afford sometimes to have a little bit of a special effect reverb as well. And we're definitely getting that from Shimmer. But if I was working on faster music, that wouldn't stop me from looking at a second treatment that maybe had a slightly longer decay time. But I would definitely be looking to make sure that whatever I went for sort of felt like it was appropriate for the lyrical content, the sort of stylistic content of my track. And I was always making sure that I was trying to get those things to match as best I could.